Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow Fury 3 bringing you an exhibition match between Chris 64 Hibberth and Perlox. This is a second match between the two of them. They just had another match, which I've cast already. That was on Hills, where Chris and Perlox were. Well, it was a Grekim versus Ciso match. Perlox is Grekim and Chris is Ciso. In this match, Chris is going for Grekim as well. And Perlox, I. Yeah, he's also going for Grekim, so he's continuing to stay as Grekim. So, the last match. Perlox went for a really powerful mid-ground rush strategy. He just he walked his stride over to the mid-ground and started building up a bunch of units, used those to assault Chris's base, although this is on hills, so it's a much smaller map than Cordova. Cordova, of course, is about twice as large as hills. Actually, it's about three times as large as hills. So it's going to be a lot harder for Perlox to be able to pull out any strats like this. And Chris, of course, is also Grekim, which can change things. So I don't know if Chris is going to be doing a triad walk Honestly, I don't imagine either player will. Cordova is not a map that really supports that sort of strategy. The expansions are very far apart. The distance between expansions is about the same distance between the two bases and hills. So it's going to be a lot harder for a triad walk to happen. But Perlox is still over going for economy in his main base. No, he is. No, it looks like he is in fact going for a bit of triad walk. He appears to be going towards the center of the map again. Okay, wow, right in this expansion. So it's still, it's a long trek, but he's deciding to go for it. So only six LCR piece in the main base, and as I mentioned in the last game, this is really vulnerable. Scouting units get in here, it's really easy to take care of it. However, in a large map like Cordova, it's harder to actually take care of this. In the hills, being it's a smaller map, you could easily send a special ops here and start just shutting all the RPs, making it a lot harder for the Grecan player doing the triad walk to actually continue the triad walk. But Cordova is quite large, and of course, Chris is also playing Grecum, so it's gonna be harder for Grecum sir, it's harder for Grecum to do assaults like this. So it's gonna be harder for Chris to actually set up an attack that takes advantage of the vulnerable LCRPs. And he's building a Seppi, gonna be building a Reef from that very quickly, and not building a lot of RPs. This is, I mean, Chris is a bit of a newer player, and it's more of a common strategy, I mean, probably more of a common strategy among more experienced players, to build as many RPs as you can afford early on, until about 10 RPs or so, and then start making decisions about whether or not you want to build RPs. So Chris right now is going heavily for early RPs, looks like he's going for QP as well, so he's going to be getting fast tech, probably fast air, going for fast air, while Perlox is setting up his Arcticus and his duo forward. He does have Octas being built near the center of the map, and he's probably going to be sending those, let's just double check from his point of view. Yes, he is sending those towards the natural expansion in the southwest, and his Arcticus is going on top of one of the office buildings here. So, that is, or sorry, middle west of the map. Southwest is over here, the giant park, and the middle west is just this little lawn in front of the business. And his Octos are building more RPs here. He's going to be able to build up some more RPs. Going back into progen mode and going to be building more RPs to this expansion. His main base, of course, completely unused, and his Articus is still flying along. So Perlox is, like I said, kind of vulnerable, kind of open, kind of stretched, but it doesn't matter because Chris cannot capitalize on this. He does not have the resources or the units to capitalize on this. And the size of the map means it's going to be a bit tricky to capitalize on this anyway. He is, however, getting very fast air units, and this is about the same time. Both players are playing about the same time. No one's really at different points of the timeline. Perlox is a slight bit ahead, about 10 seconds ahead of Chris at this point. But not that far ahead. Chris, however, doesn't have a huge amount of resources. He can't actually build air units at the moment. He doesn't have enough resources to do that. Neither air unit is actually available to him. But he is getting more RPs and will be able to build more air units from that. I really think he should go back in time and start building more RPs like, about a minute or two ago but I don't see him actually doing that. It'd be a really good idea, but he isn't, so it's kind of a shame. Anyway, Perlox is, at the same time, building more RPs for, his, for himself. He is building a Seppi and a Faro, possibly making another duo, probably just making a Reef, but maybe he's making another duo. Maybe he's making a duo to expand over to the park here. So definitely going, trying to take over the south side of the map. While Chris has not tried to expand at all yet, he is getting a dome, he's playing very defensive. He is not at all going for offensive strategies. He's not going at all for any sort of attacks. He's just going, he's getting domes with beams. He's getting air units or trying to get air units. He's getting the resources to get air units slowly. He has a spire, like I said, a bit early for the amount of resources he has. And Perlox, however, does have a lot of resources. He is getting a reef. He's likely to be using this to build spire. His Arcticus is going forward towards the north, the, sorry, the middle eastern expansion, the central eastern expansion with the Arcticus, so he'll be able to build up a Faro or two, sorry, Faro and a Seppi, building up some Arcticus from there, and getting another Faro to build an Arcticus in this base, so he has two Arcticuses now. Nice to see, I really enjoy seeing when Grecan players build multiple Arcticuses. 
And he's jumping back as well, but a minute or so. Not sure what he's doing back then, but he is... He did just jump back for some reason. He is about the four minute mark. Looks like he is getting... His reef is done. His Arcticus is being built up. And Chris, at the 454 mark, he is almost got enough... Well, he's got enough RPs to be able to build up... He's getting a Seppi Pod quite early on. He's getting a Seppi Pod earlier than Perlox is, although Perlox is likely going for the same sort of base rush, base class rush strategy he was going for last time. But he does have advanced structures, which means he will be able to build a Spire and start building some air units of his own, and he does have a lot of money in the bank, so he can easily build a couple of Fire Pods or a couple of Sippy Pods. Not sure if that's what he's planning on doing, but he's planning on getting Chronoporting first, but he is definitely getting a lot of units regardless, no matter how he does it. Unless he's jumping back a bit, possibly double checking his strategy, maybe double checking what he has in this time. He might be planning to Chronoport, but not sure. He... Ha looks like he built an extra Octo as well than he had built last time. So he's going to have a bit more resources, he's going to have a bit more of an economy going. And... At this point, it appears to be just doing review. While Chris, on the other hand, is actually changing up a bit. He does have a Sippy Pod coming in, and... Where's it harassing? It is harassing... This arc is here, over in the Central Eastern Expansion. So he knows that Perlux is going for this expansion, does not know that Perlux is going for the Central Western Expansion and has not attacked it yet. He does not know what's going on there. He doesn't have much money either. He does have more money than he had before, because he is, of course, harvesting at a regular rate. Nothing fancy, nothing non-linear going on here. So his Farpod is being built. He doesn't have enough QP for another air unit, though. Well, maybe another Seppi Pod, but not Farpod at that time. He did jump back, though, about a minute, and he is probably going to be moving a Seppi Pod, probably scouting out other parts of the map. I mean, Seppi Pods make great scouts, but... In order to scout well, you have to be patrolling around the map and kind of double-checking where the expansions are, but also making sure to keep a track of where it is to make sure that you don't actually lose a lot of time because it's focusing on one expansion. And he has Seppi and Faro that are expanding, running through the station, and going towards the northeastern expansion. They are going to be taking that over pretty quickly and handily, while Perlox has his base class rush up. He has the Seppis and as far as going at the 539 mark, he's... In a very powerful position. He has a Spire as well, so he can start building air units whenever he wants. While Perlox... While Perlox does that, Chris has one Faropod being built up, but not much else right now. However, the Seppipod has not been moved. Chris has not changed where the Seppipod's going, or at least... No, he has not. Even at his point in time, he has not changed where it's going. He is getting low legal class, so he might be going for... Well, if he gets an Octopod, he might be going for Seppi Legos. Not a bad idea if he had the money for it, but he does not. He does not have enough QP for it to really support any legal class units. So this game he is really over teching. That's one thing I would suggest is don't build tech unless you have the money to actually capitalize on that tech. Now speaking of capitalization, Perlox is going heavily for this base class rush. He does have the Faros and the Seppis. He will be able to take care of this Faropod that Faros can detect and the Seppis are great anti-air units, especially against a single Faropod. But the Faropod is more focused on dealing with this expansion so it's not even going to be able to defend. So Perlox has a lot to capitalize on with Chris's open base. And Chris is actually... He's quite vulnerable right now. Perlox jumping back a bit. He is not doing any more orders at the moment. He is just jumping back, jumping towards 635 mark, where the Seppi Pod is starting to attack the Arcticus. And of course, his units are getting in. And he is getting Gate Tech as well. This is very important to note. He's getting Gate Tech. He will be able to very quickly chronoport these units back. Probably will be doing that exactly that. Just sending these units forward and then chronoporting all of them back. Though he doesn't have the money to chronoport them all back right now, but he will soon enough. Or he's going for a Faropod. Yeah, it's more likely. He's going to send the Faropod back. Sending the base class units back would be very powerful, although, honestly, this is the best time to send the base class units in in the first place. I mean, back at this point in time, we saw that the Faropod and Zippy Pod were still near the main base. While now, they're being distracted by an Arcticus, and the Dome's trying to take care of these base class units, but it's being overwhelmed quite quickly. Chris has jumped back about a minute behind Perlox. He does have his Faropod here. He's sending his Faropod back to the main base to defend. And this is going to be pretty bad for Pearl... For... I'm sorry, Chris. His Farpod is still going to be destroyed. Seppi Pod's going to be destroyed. I mean, they're going to deal with damage they can, but he doesn't have a whole lot of units to actually defend against this. He is building quite a few Octos. Not sure if he's sending those for Assault... Yeah, he's sending them for Defense. He's not doing anything else on them. And his Faro and Seppi are reaching the Northeast base at the 7-minute mark. But it's a little bit late. I don't know how he's going to be able to rebuild from this. He can rebuild from this, but he doesn't have a lot of money to do it. And this is going to be problematic because he doesn't have... Well, he doesn't have the advantage that Perlox has. Perlox just has money, he has resources, he has map control. He has the Arcticus is now completely open, so he can just expand with it at his leisure. 
and he has Chrono Porting. So, Perlox really has it all right now. It's going to be really hard for Chris to get out of this. I, Perlox has not done any Chrono Porting yet. His Fire Pot has not been complete. Well, it's complete around here. But he hasn't Chrono Ported it back at all. And his base class units have, however, gone in the main base quite handily. Chris is, has sent his Archers. Actually, the Archers are doing a really good job of defense. Better job than I expected. And they're able to take care of the Seppies and Faros quite quickly. The Fire Pot supporting them. This is actually a very effective defense that... Chris has put on, although Prolox, like I said, still has Chrono Porting, he still can deal with this very quickly, and Chris does not have Detectors, he does not have any Faros with his army, so Farpod Chrono Porting back, which is likely to do, will be a powerful, powerful enemy. Let me see here, so it looks like Prolox is going to be, and he's still going to be having an advantage, he doesn't have any Chrono Ports going on yet, but he does have, like, more Farpods, he can easily Chrono Port them back, he's... Doing exactly that, he's pausing, getting ready for a chronoport, and here we go. So once the chronoport happens, there we go, chronoport departure detected because, well, the chronoport's happened, but it looks like, wait, what? Oh, it looks like the chronoports may not have been those particular fire pods. Not at that point, anyway. And by the way, Chris does not, still has legal class, he does not have anything else. He has semi pods coming up, though. Not a bad idea. Semipods are great counter to Farpods because, of course, they are detectors and they are anti-air units. The Farpod is coming in here, and this is probably the Farpod that Chrono ported back. Because I don't think Perlox sent back those Chrono those Farpods that were in his main base. Sent back this Farpod instead, which we'll see jump back. Well, likely see jump back very soon. Though, there we go. That it did Chrono port back. That's going to be very powerful. The Green Time Wave is carrying that damage, and Chris is going to have to deal with that. And it's going to be very hard for him to do so. Two more Farbots coming in, likely to corner port back as soon as they reach the main base as well. And the base class units have been retreated. Perlock did actually manage to retreat them in time. And yes, the Farbot is able to destroy the triad. The entire triad, Chris's entire triad has been destroyed. His only construction units left are in the Northeast expansion. His main base has been destroyed. He has an Arcticus still, but his main base triad has been destroyed. So there isn't much Chris can do about this. And now Perlox had already sent... Actually, I guess this is when he sent his base class units in, but now that the triad has been destroyed... A lot of production that would have happened did not happen. So Chris does not have most of his army, does not have the semi that he had before. He is getting Chrono Porting of his own, but he doesn't have any use to Chrono Port back yet. He does have this base in the northeast corner. He needs to start developing it more, getting a ton of RPs, just saturating the entire base, and then building up, maybe not completely now, but definitely building up an army and saturating the base at about the same time. Because right now, Chris, he does not have Chrono Porting. He will not get Chrono Porting. He has been destroyed. The reef has been destroyed. The main base has been destroyed by Perlox's... Uppercut, very powerful uppercut. And actually, Prolox's point of view, his base class units are coming in even more powerfully than they were before. And he looks like he's re porting the Farapod again. So he is dealing a ton of damage, just being merciless about this. So he's re porting the Farapod. So this Farapod has been chronoported back twice. Or I should say, these Farapods have been chronoported back twice, but that's beside the point. So yeah, it looks like Chris does not have much of a chance, but he does have this Northeast base. That is a bit of hope. He does have a way out of this. But he isn't taking advantage of it, he's... Or, if he is, it's very little. He doesn't have a lot of resources to take advantage of it, though. That's the one problem. And Perlox sending back even... Sending back even more Farapods. He is just... Ripping this base to shreds with... The Chronoported Farapods. Although, to be honest, it was already destroyed. He's just doing it faster. But yeah, that Farapod... That... That's the hero of this match. That's the most valuable unit of this match. It's... Pretty scary, though, when it comes in. And it looks like Chris, like I said, Northeast base is not being developed as well as it could be. He does have a couple more options coming in and a Faro coming in. Probably the Faro will be used to build up a Spire. And resources are... Oh, wow, he doesn't have enough LC for this. Probably should move these RPs to LC, maybe jump back about a minute or so and move them. Because his... Well, I don't know. I don't think this base has been scattered out yet. Prolex is not aware of it. So he's going to have to scatter around the map to figure out where Chris is hiding. And interestingly, Perlox did not actually go for this southwest base as I initially predicted. His triad, I'm not sure where it went, I guess it's just going forward to attack. And Perlox not, yeah, is not sure if Chris has lost. Chris, like I said, does have the northeast base. Chris is the northeast base, he is not, he is down but not out. He does have a way out of this. Whether he's able to capitalize on it, we'll find out. And like I said, it's going to take a while because he needs to move these RPs over. I really don't know why he is focusing on QP so hard. He needs LC to build more RPs. It's one thing to focus on. Although, like I said, initially he needed to focus on RPs to begin with. Perlox managed to do a great job with this little triad walk. 
to get these RPs at the Central Western Expansion. He hasn't got the Central Eastern Expansion yet, though, interestingly. Prolux has not developed that at all, not got the Arcticus for anything. He is, however, sending his units straight towards the Northeast base. He has found it, the Farpod has found the Northeast base, so there really isn't much that Chris can do. Gonna probably put up a Valiant Last Stand, but I don't see what he could possibly do. Prolux can easily Chronoport this Farpod back if he wants to. And he's not even bothering to do it. He can just destroy this base as it is. Just, there's no Seppies, nothing really blocking him. And of course, he need a Faro to detect, so Perlox... Perlox has won this match. I don't see any way Chris can get out of this. Chris does have a Seppi, however. He did manage to get a Seppi in his own personal timeline. Or he actually stood up his Seppi, but it's still a really bad spot. Perlox's base lasting units are coming in. We'll be able to destroy Chris without too much issue, though... Chris is building another dome. He should probably make these guys a triad. Start... No, I guess he can't really build too many units from that. He doesn't have a lot of LC. Like I said, focusing on QP when you don't have anything to spend QP on is a bad idea. It's rather unfortunate. So yeah, it looks like Chris... Just preparing for a Valiant Last Stand as Perlox's forces close in on his northeast base. The last bastion of hope for... Chris's... Chris's attempts to win this game. Which, like I said, is going to be dashed pretty quickly. And yeah, here's that Faro we saw before that does enough damage to get rid of the Seppi, but not the Faro. And then. Base class units. Perlox's forces just jump, jump to Perlox's point of view when the attack actually happens. One of them is. Faros are going to be damaged slightly by the dome. One of them gets killed, but that doesn't matter. The rest of them are going to be able to just destroy everything that Chris has. Coming on both sides, both entrances to the base, destroying the RPs, and there is no way Chris is getting out of this. Chris has lost this match. It's just a matter of him GGing and surrendering. But still, a better match than the last time. Though, like I said, Chris really needs to build more RPs. Building more RPs is very important. Especially on Cordova, building RPs, even just near your main base, works out really well. So, that's the one thing I could say. Build RPs. Build lots of RPs. Don't skimp on RPs in the early game. Yeah, that was a good demonstration of how that can work. And also, the power of Grecan base class units, at least when your opponent's unprepared. Although, like I said, it has been found with even high-level play that base class units are pretty powerful. Especially in large numbers. When you have the Articus commanding them, you don't have to worry too much about Chrono Energy, and the units themselves are very powerful units. Interesting that Prolox did not actually end up using his second Articus for anything. He simply had it sitting there. Useful distraction with the Farpod and Sepipod, but not that great. So, that was... That was the game. Just gonna start discuss, like, discussing what went on during the game. I don't really know there's much point in waiting around for that. So I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night.